Hey, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own local WordPress development environment using a free piece of software called Local by Flywheel. Now, even though there are several other alternatives for creating a WordPress development environment locally, I have to say that Local by Flywheel is by far the easiest and the most beginner friendly that I've come across in the last 13 years. So in this video, we're going to cover how we can set up your own local development environment using Local by Flywheel and how to make the most of its features. And by the end of the video, you'll be able to spin up your own WordPress websites, taking advantage of all the benefits that come with working locally on WordPress, including allowing your customers to see those websites. And then finally, we'll cover how we can push those websites to live once you're ready, finishing with the development phase. So let's dive in. Hey, I'm Dan Davis, and if you're new to the channel and you're looking for real life WordPress tips and tricks to level up your WordPress skills, then make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications. And if you see value in this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Now, if you're new to WordPress development, you might be thinking, what do I need a local development environment for? Why can't I just work on my live site? Well, let me tell you, there's a ton of benefits for using a local WordPress development environment, and it's also good practice as a developer. Some of the primary benefits are, firstly, you can work offline, meaning you can continue to work on your WordPress website, even if you haven't got a connection to the internet. You don't need to pay any hosting, you don't need to pay for any domain names yet, and you can work on your WordPress website without any risk to your live website. You can experiment with new features, themes, plugins, all without worrying about breaking your live site and without annoying your visitors with you know broken pages and downtime. Secondly, you can speed up your development process by working locally, making changes faster. And as you'll see as we go through this video, there's no uploading and downloading files. You're just changing them on your machine and the experience is a lot faster. And thirdly, you can gain confidence in the changes that you've made to your site, making sure that everything's working perfectly before you're pushing it to life. Okay, so before we can create our local WordPress site, we need to download and install Local by Flywheel. Now, don't worry, it's completely free and it's super user friendly and we can download it on our machines within a matter of a few clicks. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to head over to your browser and go to localwp.com. Now I'll link this in the description in case you need it. Once you're on that page, you'll get presented with this and you'll see a little demo here. And this is their homepage where it explains a little bit more about the service and the product that they've got. But what we need to do is we need to download. So if we click this download button in the top right, and then you'll be asked what platform you're using. So I'm going to be doing this on a Mac. Obviously, you can do it on Windows and Linux. But for this example, we're doing it on a Mac. So I'll click Mac. And then you just got to put some basic information in. So I'll put my name in. And my email address. Not no need to put my phone number in. Get it now. And then it should start downloading. I'm going to save this on my desktop. And then as you can see, it's 294 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long. Once it's installed, you can open it. We'll then get presented with this, which means you need to move the application into your applications folder. So just drag it across. That may take a few minutes. And once that's complete, you just need to close this window. I mean, close this window. And now we can open local on our Mac. And as you can see now, the application is loading and that's it. You've installed Local by Flywheel. And as you can see, just with a matter of a few clicks, we've managed to get this application installed. And it really is that simple to get it set up. So now we can move on to the next step, which is creating our first website. Okay, so now that we've installed Local, we're now ready to create our first website. So let's get started. Now you'll see on mine, because I already had this installed and a couple of test sites already in here, you won't have anything here and you'll probably see a big green button here, which will say to add a site. So you can do it that way, or you can click this add button here, which will create a brand new site. So the first thing you're going to be presented with is this, which is to create a new site or create from blueprint. Now to keep the thing simple for this tutorial, we're going to run through create a new site, which is probably where you're at at the moment. So we just select that and click continue. Now we need to give the site a name. So you can put absolutely anything in here and it will form part of the URL that we'll be using to access the website. I normally put a website address in here, something that I imagine this would be, so you can put anything. Now just to show you the advanced options, so this is showing us that we're going to create the domain 
danstestwebsite.com.local. That's how we'll access this website. We can change that if we want, but I'd recommend leaving it as default. And then we can dictate the local site path where this website will sit, where the files will be on your computer. So probably recommend leaving that as default. And then just click continue. So now you're going to get prompted to choose the environment that you want to work with. I recommend leaving it as preferred but obviously depending on your current hosting and your server, it would be advisable to make sure that your development site and your hosting match environments, just so you don't get any conflicts. And as you can see here, the preferred method is PHP 8.19 and the web server is Nginx and my SQL is version 8.016. Now you can change this. So if you know that your server is only running 7.4 and you're on Apache, and your database is 5.7, then you should pick those settings. If you're unsure, just stick with preferred and then click continue. And now you can enter some details just so you've got a username and password to enter into this website. And then you can enter your WordPress email address. And then the advanced options for this is whether this is a multi-site or not. Now, just in case you don't know, a multi-site allows you to manage multiple WordPress websites inside one admin. But for this example, we're going to leave this as no, and we're going to add a new site. And as you can see now, local is creating everything that's needed for this website to function. So we just give it a second. In order for it to create all the rules that are required, we need to enter our computer's password and click OK. So once you're done, you'll see that your new website is listed on the left hand side here. And now we're ready to start working on the website. Now we'll go through all the options we've got in a second. Just for now, we just want to show you the website. So if we click open site. Now to start with, you get presented with this warning. Now this is because we don't have an SSL certificate installed. But for this example, we click continue to site. And as we can see, we've got a default WordPress website set up working on danstestwebsite.com.local. So we're up and running. Now, if we head back to local, now we can access the WP admin to click in this link. And then obviously we created a username. Send the password so we can log in. And now we're inside the website's admin, which is where we can start playing around with themes, plugins and functions and everything that we need for our website. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the local by flywheel dashboard and how to navigate it. So when you first open it up, so you'll see on the left hand side, the sites that you've created. And here you can see the basic information like their status. So this one's running as it goes green here. These aren't running uh, and the domain name. So to access your site, you simply click on the site name on the left hand side and then you'll be taken to the site overview page. And here you can see the site's details such as the domain name, database name, environment it's running on. And you can also access other key features such as the site's logs. So if we click here, we can see the logs. So if we look at the PHP errors, we can view those here. Uh, we've got the database manager here, so we can open up the admin. Uh, I don't know if you want to change some options like the site URL, all that information is here, a bit like PHP my admin, my admin. And we also have some other tools that we'll cover in a moment. So if you want to make changes to things like uh, updating PHP, then you can do that here just by s simply selecting the PHP version you want and clicking apply. If you wanted to change the web server to Nginx from Apache, you just select it, click apply. Uh, if you need shell access, you've got access to that quickly here. If you can open that up and it'll open up straight into the directory where your files are. So you can see everything is there. I can close that. Some of the options that you might need. If you right click on the name and obviously open site, open admin, go to the sites folder, open the site shell. You can restart the server. You can stop it. You can clone the site. You can export for backups or moving it to live. You can save it as a blueprint, change the domain, rename, or completely delete the entry with this option. Now you'll notice under tools, there's some options here. So, so any mail that are sent through the WordPress website on local, they won't actually get delivered to your inbox. What will happen is they'll get sent to MailHog. So you can open up MailHog and you basically get uh, an inbox where there's no emails, but this is where your mail will be sent. So it's a good way for accessing and testing contact forms. This is where you need to check for your mail. 
Now, one really powerful tool is this Live Links. Now, you will need to create an account. It's free to be able to use this, but this will allow you to share your local site with the potentially your customer. So if I just show you this quickly, so we click a login to use. I've got an account already. Login. And it'll redirect me and you'll see that the little placeholder has now changed to my initials. And now the live link section has been activated. So if I enable live links, it's creating a tunnel. And what it's done now is it's created a URL, which isn't the same URL as what I've created here. This is an actual URL that will work on the internet and it's created a username and a password. So if I share this with my customer, so let's click this, he'll get presented with this and then he can enter the username and the password that we've given him. I just click this and now he's got a direct tunnel to the local site that I'm working on. So this is super powerful for sharing any changes that you made to a website that you might want to show the customer before going live. But it's a great tool and a great feature. So we can disable this for now. Obviously for, him, for this to work, your machine needs to be online and accessible and the live links needs to be enabled. Otherwise he won't be able to see anything. Uh, and just to show as an example, if we try and go here now that I've disabled it, he gets a 404. So some of the features, we got the link checker here. So this will allow you to scan your site for broken links. I've seen nothing at the moment, so that's fine. Another super cool feature is the instant reload. So if you enable this, as you make changes to files, it'll start logging them and the updates will happen to the website instantly. So that's a really cool feature which will speed up your development process. And that's it. Those are the key features of the local by flywheel dashboard that you need to know. And by using these features, you'll be able to manage your local WordPress site more efficiently and effectively. And in the next steps, we'll take a look and show you how to work with your local site and make changes to it. Okay, so now that we've covered how to navigate the local by flywheel dashboard, it's time to get stuck into the fun part, which is creating content, picking your theme, picking your plugins, making changes, and just getting your WordPress website up and running. So to get started, what we need to do is we need to click on WP Admin so we can log into the website. I've obviously put the username and password in already, so now we're, we're signed into the admin. So one of the first things we're going to look to do is you need to obviously set your theme. Now I imagine you're not going to use the default theme. For this example, you know, we'll just change theme for the purposes of showing you. So once you've picked your theme, obviously you can upload your own theme, but once you've got your theme set, you can then look to customize it. Now we're not going to cover how to customize themes in this tutorial, but it just gives you an idea of the steps that you would go through now. So yeah, so you can upload your logo, do any of the theme customizations as you normally would. And obviously we can go to plugins and we can pick out plugins. Now one thing you may have noticed is how quick each page loads. Now the reason that is because we're not actually going to the internet for most of these page loads to find data. We're just doing it locally, which just shows how quick things can be. Now, obviously when you're downloading plugins, it's getting them from the internet, but just browsing around, you know, clicking add new. All of this is done locally. So once you've got your theme picked and you've made some customizations, probably the next thing you want to have to do is to customize your website with some plugins. So you head over to plugins, add new. I don't know, you may want to add a contact form. So you can just browse contact form seven, install plugin, activate. And there. So you just go about customizing your website as you feel fit. And then let's take this short code that we've got here. So the next thing we want to do is start creating some pages. So let's create a home page. Let's put a contact form on the home page. Publish. And then if we head back to our settings, let's set the home page as our home page. So just by going through these steps, you know, creating content, creating pages, posts, customizing the theme, adding plugins, you'll quickly start developing your website. So if we go and have a look at our website, there we go. What a website, danstestwebsite.com. And then you can get in touch with me here. So we've got a website. We're now ready for this website to go live. How do we do that? Okay, so great. You finished customizing your website. This looks absolutely amazing. And um, we want to put this live. 
what steps do we need to go through to get this live? Now, the good news is with Local by Flywheel, this process is pretty straightforward. So we need to now migrate the website. Now, there's a few ways you could do this. You could use a plugin. I will link at the end of the video uh, a tutorial of how to use this, but you could use something like Duplicator. Install this and activate it. And then go through the process of creating a package. I will link to a tutorial of how to use Duplicator at the end of the video as well. And that'll help you go down this route if that's what you choose to do. Another easy way to migrate the website and get it live would be to go back to your local dashboard. And if you right click on the site name, you can actually click export. And then you click export site. And we can save this on our desktop export and now local by flywheel is creating a, a backup package for you so you can install it on your live website so now that we've got our backup the only thing you need to do is to go to your new host upload the files in the database now you will need to go into php my admin and make some tweaks to change the url to the new live website address and you'll need to change a wp config to make sure that the, the new database is being called instead of the one that we've used in this test site on local by flywheel. I will also link to a tutorial on how to do that, of how to import a website manually in cPanel. So you've got two guides there, whether you want to use Duplicator or whether you want to go ahead and do it manually with the export that I've just shown you. And that's it. So by following these steps, you can easily create websites locally on your WordPress environment, play around with them, make changes, and then obviously push them to live once you're ready. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found the video informative. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up. And if you're looking for more WordPress tips and tricks to level up your WordPress skills, then make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications. See you on the next one.